Hello, welcome back to another episode from Pale Horse Survival and Tactical. I'm Bill, glad you could join me. Today we're working with rawhide. Stay tuned. Okay, I have the my uh, workbench all set up over here. And this is the rawhide. I'm using rawhide dog chews, the kind that come in a roll like this. It works pretty good. It's pretty decent rawhide. It's actually not bad, so I use this for a lot of projects if I don't have the real the stuff that I've harvested. Uh, I bought this hatchet some time back, and this is made by Prandy. P-R-A-N-D-I, which is one of the largest tool makers in Italy. It's actually a pretty nice hatchet. I really like it. I bought it used, and uh, it's in really good shape. Great edge retention, and uh, it's really grown to become my favorite. The only problem is it didn't come with a, a mask. It came with this funky rubber guard to protect the blade here so I've got saran wrap on here because we're going to be making a mask for this today and I don't want to rust my the uh, wet rawhide will be in contact with that for a couple days while it dries rawhide's like mother nature's kydex I don't want it to rust so once we apply it will allow it to shrink. Rawhide will shrink about a quarter to three-eighths of an inch as it dries on average, give or take. And so when you're making a project you have to account for the shrinkage aspect, but whatever, say you're making a knife sheath or uh, a mask, you want to put the item inside and allow it to shrink and dry around your item so it kind of custom fits more or less. So this is a uh, knife sheath that I made out of rawhide. Gave it a little native flare with some buckskin lacing. And that's my Becker BK-14, my neck knife. So this is one of my other projects. you find that one on the channel as well. So this is what we're going to be working on is a mask. So the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to lace, we're going to lace the mask together using rawhide lacing and I'm going to cut some lacing out of this. I'm going to show you how we're going to do that here in just a few so stay tuned. Just moved my acorn meal over here. I'm drying it in the sun. I just got through leaching that and that was from uh, Quercus lobata valley oak acorns. And uh, so I just shot a video while well, I'm concluding an episode on the cold leech bowl method, which is kind of a more traditional method. And uh, so look forward to that one. Keep your eyes open on the channel for that one. So as soon as this dries, I'm going to conclude that episode, and that'll be up on the channel here uh, pretty soon. So it's a complete tutorial on uh, processing and leaching uh, acorns with the cold leech method. Okay, so we're going to cut some lacing here. Now I use my fixed blade knife for many different purposes. That just means I have less items that I have to carry. So my, uh, you have a good fixed blade knife is invaluable for that, uh, that purpose. So we're up here at the head of the workbench. I'll show you how I cut rawhide lacing. I do this all the time. If you do this, be careful not to cut yourself. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to square this corner off here. Square the edge here. It's 
So when you're making rawhide lacing, you cut your piece of rawhide and you want to round the edges off, the corners rather. Round your corners. And you're going to see why that is here in just a few. We're going to make the lacing about a uh, quarter of an inch. Wide. take your time. It doesn't take long at all. to get quite a bit of cordage in this manner. I've made bow drill cordage, twisted it using this very same method and it worked great for an all primitive bow drill set. Take your time, try to get it fairly consistent in thickness. It doesn't have to be exact. If you vary a little, it's better to vary slightly wide than narrow. If it narrows, you've got a weak spot. And we should be getting pretty close to having enough cordage after all the hatchet is not very big. You can see what we have already. Quite a bit in a short amount of time. You just give it a light stretch. You don't want to pull too hard. You don't want to break it. Once it's dry, it's very tough. I'm going to do a 
little bit more. It's best to have a little too much than not enough. It's nothing more aggravating than working on a project and coming up a bit short on material. One more pass down the long side, long side here, rather. When you terminate this, you want to veer off the edge into a point. You see in that short amount of time we've got probably a good two and a half foot of cordage. You veer it off, leave a point. And you're going to see why. We're going to use that as improvised needles to poke it through the holes. So I'm going to put the quarters to the side and readjust the camera and I'll be right back. Okay, this is a mini punch set that I carry in my possibles bag. A little field kit for doing this type of work. It has a selection of bits, uh, the punches, different sizes. And that is from Tandy Leather Company, if anybody's interested. And no, I'm not affiliated with them. And I have a round up here to protect my bench surface because we're going to be punching some holes here. see what we can do here. Piece of charcoal from my fire pit used to mark. I use sandpaper to sharpen these back up. I'm going to make this about three-eighths of an inch oversize. That'll give us room to punch holes, run our lacing, and then account for the shrinkage. We're looking at about here. We'll run the marks. And then we'll use this first one as a pattern for the second.
save your scraps. You can make rawhide glue out of that. I have a couple big cans of uh, little pieces that I have saved over a period of time. You don't have to use a knife, you can use a pair of scissors. I've just gotten used to doing things with minimal equipment in as I would build them in the bush. So this is how I do pretty much all my projects. But yeah, she can use, definitely use scissors if that is what you want to use. Okay, there is part of it. And that is a good three eighths of an inch overlap here. do is I'm going to cut this. I just want the bottom of that to go in. We'll run this up across the top. I think that'll look good up to about here. So we're going to go in Cut an arc here. All right, there we go. There is one half. We use this as a pattern. So it's going to go on just like this. I think that'll look pretty good. That actually looks really good. So we'll cut one more. I'm going to go ahead and pause the camera. 
while I do that. And I will be right back. Stay tuned. Okay, we're looking pretty good here. Got them evened up. I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn the screen around first. You see what I'm doing here. So we're pretty, uh, pretty even now. Let's make sure these are square. Go ahead and start punching our holes. the first one. So I'll probably run a line of holes across the top here and we'll space them out about say about every half inch. Should be good enough for this. Make sure your material doesn't drift on you while you're punching holes. Rawhide has a tendency to, to do that. This is our first line, so I'm going to go ahead, this is what we have, so I'm going to go ahead and continue punching holes here. I'm going to run the holes down the front and then about two holes here at the bottom. And I'm going to go ahead and pause the camera so I'm not boring, boring everybody to death while I do that. And I shall return. Stay tuned. Okay, this is what we have. The hole's punched. And I think that's going to work pretty good. Just about like 
that. Okay, I just swapped out the tips of the punch and I've got the next size smaller installed here. I'm going to show you why. Now this is why we cut these at a taper, at a point, use it as a sewing needle. So we're going to start up here on this back edge. The point goes through the hole. Just like that. Now the way you start rawhide lacing, instead of tying it into a knot, we're going to punch a hole through the lacing. That's why I want a size smaller on the, on the tip. And then we're going to run this back through the hole and then pull it tight. And then later on we'll go ahead and trim that little piece sticking up. You can round it and taper it and uh, it's the way you begin and end rawhide lacing. It's a very neat way of starting this, so we'll go ahead and punch this, and I'll bring the camera over here. I realize this may be a little bit confusing. So I'll bring the camera over here. So you can see exactly what I'm doing. Or I'll just bring the material over here. Okay, so we ran. We started the rawhide lacing, just pushed it through the hole, and then punched a hole in the lacing. Now, you want to make sure that the rawhide isn't twisted. So run the thumb down, grab the end. You don't want to twist in it. Come back up. This is why this, again, this is why this is pointed. Use them as a needle. So we can thread them through these holes. Take your time doing this. You don't want to blow that hole out. Got a little bit fatter section here I'm trying to coax through. Got more cordage than we need here, but it's good to have too much than not enough. Keep hitting fat sections here and it's slowing me down. We have a twist in here too. Sorry guys, turned into a little wrestling match here. I'm hearing migrating geese. 
passing over the mountain top. I don't know if you're picking that up. Well, once we get past this initial hurdle. Okay, well we definitely earned that part. Okay, so you get the idea. And I've got a twist in here. I don't know if the camera's picking up the geese. Okay, so this is what we have. And then we can go and trim this end off. You can trim it off pretty close. And you just pull it tight. And we're going to go ahead and add some fringe to this. Hopefully the camera's picking that up. Cut some buckskin. I cut some buckskin cordage that I had. We're going to add some fringe to this. So I have 14 loops here and we're going to add them inside the loops <clears throat> and then tie them off. So the main thing when you're running this just make sure you don't get a twist in it. through the next hole. Go ahead and pass. A piece of buckskin lacing through that loop. And we have another loop. Gonna pass another piece of lacing through there. And these pieces of lacing
Actually, I think I won't even knot them. I'm just going to pull that lacing down tight. And that's the way we're going to do this. We're just going to keep working around. Just like that. So I'm going to go ahead and work my way all the way around. And uh... all right, so this is where we are. I went ahead and put the hatchet inside so this will dry. I need to, it'll dry and shrink. I need to trim this piece where I terminated the uh, cordage at the bottom here. So I'll just cut that off flush. And uh, so what we need to do is we need to add a retention setup on here, a strap. So I think I'm going to punch a hole around here. We'll run some buckskin lacing up over the top and then we'll uh, attach a small toggle on the other side, a little wooden toggle that that loop will hook onto and that'll hold this in place. So go ahead and start working on that. I think it came out okay. Kind of have mixed feelings on the on the fringe little idea. I thought I'd add some in, but I don't know if I like them or not. I guess I'll just let it dry. If I decide I don't like them, I can just pull them out of there, out of the loop. So, stay tuned. Alright, so we'll go ahead and uh, punch a hole in here. I need to go through one side. Probably put the toggle up here. I guess we'll call this the front.
couple holes for the toggle and then we'll flip it around. Poke a hole on the back side where we will attach the lacing. So we'll just take a buckskin lacing, form a loop, and Actually, I think the way that I'm going to... Now we can do it this way. No, we'll go with my original plan. Run this through to the inside and then knot it so it'll act as a stop knot back in here. But I need to uh, a little piece of wood, make a toggle for the front so we can adjust this. So let me go ahead and find one and uh, I shall return. Okay, made a little little toggle here. So where I punched two holes. Toggle will go right in here. going to tie it and overhand on the back side well on the inside Trim off the excess. So I think what I'm going to do is, I'm going to wait to attach this piece after it's dry. 
Now, let's get a visual here. Let's see what we're dealing with. Well, that's not too bad. I can knot the back side. So this is what we're looking at. With the toggle, the strap running up over the top to hold it in place. I think I'll probably just knot this on the back side. Pull it snug and then probably be the best way to do this. off this piece of cordage that's flopping around here. That should be all right once it shrinks and dries. I think it'll be pretty decent. I'll go ahead and bring the camera over here. We can have a look at it. All right, here we are. It's a toggle attached. And then I just loop the rawhide or uh, buckskin cordage around. And then just secured it in the back side here. I'll knot it off better once I have the length, once it's dry and I have to do any minor adjustments to the length of this this cordage, but uh, once this dries and shrinks it shouldn't be too bad. I'm going to set this over in the sun so it can start drying out and shrinking up. I've had this sitting in the sun for a few hours and uh, it's shrinking up nice, molding to the shape of the hatchet and the cordage seems to be just the right tension as it's shrinking so it's going to shrink a little bit more but uh, it's actually not too bad still have mixed feelings about the fringe but yeah what the heck it's personalized if I find out I don't like them I can just pull them out of there but I thought I'd dress it up a little bit but uh, yeah, it's come along pretty good. Let it dry for a couple of days. And uh, new mask for the hatchet. It's better than the piece of rubber that was on there. Well, I hope all of you enjoyed this episode as much as I did making it. Please like, subscribe, and share. 
I hope all of you are having an outstanding day or night, depending on where you're located. And I will see all of you very soon on the next one. Everybody take care. Bye-bye.